San Antonio starts right now. COVID-19 safety protocols now in place at multiple area school districts will lay out what parents need to know as their kids head back to school from winter break. Plus a miracle witnessed by dozens in Pennsylvania helicopter crash is in the best way possible. Everyone survived, including a baby on board. RJ Marcus has the full story in your morning headlines. A local school district has partnered with the city of San Antonio to bring internet to hundreds of students. Coming up, Tiffany Huerta shows us the impact it will have on our community. Good morning. A new school year is underway and we are at Veramindi Elementary School in New Braunfels with an excited group of fifth graders. Katie Science Lab on the road is back. David Sears is here and we are ready to go. We're gonna be doing an experiment all about <laughs> weathering erosion and deposition, something these kiddos have been learning a lot about over the past couple weeks. They're all ready to be famous. We're ready to do some learning. We'll see you later on in the show. Good morning, I'm Max Mass. We are here at the San Antonio Zoo and we were talking about arthritis in animals and specifically Bubba, a 27 year old Komodo dragon. We're gonna explain in just a bit. And good morning to you. It's Wednesday, January 12th. Thanks for joining us this morning. You saw kind of David in the background. It's his birthday today. Let's wish him a happy birthday. Hope he has fun out there with Katie Science Lab. Happy birthday to our David Sears. Let's go outside with live cam. If you're just now joining us here on KSA all morning long, we've been tracking some clouds and chilly temperatures, but we're hearing rumors of a warm up, Justin. It is on the way. And by the way, those those are some good teases. I'm excited to hear about Komodo dragons and do science labs and everything else you guys got coming up. So that's good stuff. Uh, it's going to be a great show. Uh, we start, though, with the cloud cover you guys mentioned. Those clouds are uh, starting to shift south. We're still underneath the cloud cover here in San Antonio, but there's some clearing up there around Fredericksburg, Austin, getting a little bit closer to Rock Springs, that clearing line. So uh, it'll probably take until the early afternoon, but we will get some sun today, and those temperatures will warm up. 41 degrees, Boulverde, 46 in New Braunfels, 37 in Bandera, 43 right now in Hondo. So it's still pretty chilly. The temperatures moderate a little bit as you get closer to the coast. 53 Victoria, 51 in Beville. Pollen count is in. Mountain Cedar jumped up a little bit. So did Molds, but it wasn't a huge jump. They're both moderate now, 490 and 750 respectively. And uh, here's what to expect. Next few days, afternoon clearing today as we talked about. Tomorrow and Friday, sunny and in the 70s should be beautiful. The weekend, though, brings another cold front. And the big story with this front is going to be gusty winds. Gusts to 45 miles per hour. Expect those temperatures today to get up to around 63 this afternoon. Light and variable winds. We'll talk more about that cold front and those winds coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. A quick look at the roads with TransGuide this morning. There's a look at I-35 at St. Mary's and things are moving. The number of local COVID patients in hospitals here in our area continues to climb. This morning, we're near 900. 195 of those are in intensive care. 73 are currently on ventilators. Metro Health also reporting another 4,200 new cases. No new deaths are being reported. We spoke with an emergency room doctor from Methodist Hospital who says it's been difficult to tell the difference between COVID-19 and allergies and that the case numbers may be higher than what we're seeing now. And seven of the city's 16 school districts, including two of the city's largest, have laid out the COVID-19 policies. Each has an effect as students, teachers, and staff who would have fallen ill prepare to return to campus. Sarah Costa is in our newsroom with what parents need to know about COVID protocols for area districts. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie can definitely get confusing considering some districts follow CDC guidelines while others rely on the Texas Education Agency regarding how long the quarantine period should be. So let's start with San Antonio ISD. They are following CDC guidelines. People with COVID-19 should isolate for five days. And if they are asymptomatic or their symptoms are resolving, that means without fever for 24 hours, you no longer have to isolate. But the CDC says to follow that by five days of wearing a mask when around others. A negative test is not required after that five day isolation. Northeast ISD is doing things a little different. If a student tests positive for COVID-19, they will isolate at home for five days after the day the symptoms began or after they test positive. If a student has isolated for five days and no longer has symptoms, they don't need a test to return. 
If they wish to return earlier than five days, that's when they need a negative test. If a student is still experiencing symptoms after five days, any ISD is asking for students to stay at home until they have been without a fever for 24 hours. Now let's look at Southside ISD. They are following TEA guidelines. If a student tests positive, they must stay home for 10 days. A negative test is not required when symptoms improve to return. If symptomatic after 10 days and results are negative with a rapid test, the district is requiring students to stay home until a follow-up PCR test confirms those test results. Again, this is a lot of information. If you just head to KSAC.com, we have all of it on our homepage, along with several more district COVID-19 protocols. Mark and Stephanie. Hundreds of Harlandale ISD students will soon have internet at home thanks to a partnership with the city of San Antonio. And cell towers are being installed throughout the community to help students overcome the digital divide. Tiffany Huertas joins us live from the site of where one of those towers will be installed very soon. Tiffany? Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Right now we're at Columbia Heights Elementary School where one of those towers will be installed. Just check it out. This tower will allow many students in this area. Homes within a mile radius will be able to get internet. A total of 14 cell towers will be installed in total. Crews began installing these back in December. Now families who live near these towers will receive a router where they can connect to the internet. To talk more about this project is Myrna with the district. Good morning. Talk to us about this unique project and how it all got started. Um, well, good morning, first of all. And, um, we, we first looked at getting internet access to our students even pre-COVID. Um, one of the things that we wanted to do was expand the school day and make sure that they had access. Um, some of the barriers that we know our families face are, you know, they, they didn't have devices, so the district provided one-to-one. -one, but then once they had the device at home, they didn't have the internet access. So it was like, okay, we'll give them hotspots. But then what this, this does is it provides a more, a more permanent solution and a, and a stronger signal than a hotspot would. Um, and so the city of San Antonio, through the CARES funding, um, got funded, you know, to try to build up the, the, the internet connectivity in the city. And we reached out to them and we said, you know, use us, use us, you know, we'll be your pilot, we'll be your proof of concept. And so initially we started out with a six tower solution and, and since then it's grown to 14 towers. Wow. And so we're really excited because I think what's going to happen, the six was going to give us about 35% connectivity throughout the district. The 14 we're hoping is going to be closer to 100%. And so hopefully we'll saturate the, the signals will start to mesh and then we'll provide just a, an umbrella over the district of, of internet connectivity for our students. And how were you all able to pick these locations? Was there a strategy behind all of this? So yes, in the beginning when we had only six to work with, um, we looked at population density. We looked at the greatest need. Um, the UTSA um, provided us with some research um, of where there wasn't internet connection. You know, somehow they, they were able to figure out who didn't have internet internet connection and that's how the original six were selected. Um, the, the next eight, which are the ones that are coming, were just there to, to expand on the 35 or 30 to 35 percent coverage and then just saturate the district and so those were placed in in locations to fill the gaps basically amazing all of this will be hopefully live in spring break during spring break right? the the entire project we're hoping will be completed by then the first um, tower will go live actually at the end of this month so we're a couple of weeks away from from launching the initial the initial first signal so we'll see what that looks like that's amazing what a great concept here for this community and maybe others will join. Back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Tiffany. Wednesday well, morning headlines, a scary scene in Pennsylvania after a medevac helicopter crashes right in front of a church. Plus two lawsuits filed in New York seeking $2 billion in damages after that deadly apartment fire in the Bronx. And a northern California town trying to take action against some birds terrorizing their restaurants and businesses. RJ Marcus is here with those stories and more. Good morning, hey, Good morning, Good morning, guys. Definitely not a story to uh, crow about, uh, to say the least. Yeah, these birds <laughs> causing some uh, big problems. We'll uh, talk about that here in just a bit. But uh, as you guys just mentioned earlier, uh, starting this morning in Pennsylvania, where imagine you're just driving down the street. Next thing you know, you see a helicopter fall from the sky and crash right in front of you. Take a look at that video behind me. So this medical helicopter was heading to a children's hospital with three adults and a baby on board when it went down in a busy area right in front of a 
church. One local family was out running errands and say their car pulled right up next to that church when they saw the medical chopper descending. Other witnesses say they were just shocked to see the pilot manage to land that chopper without any major damage. See the tail of it kind of like swinging like this. And so then it's coming there. So I put my car in reverse, slammed on it on the gas, reversed backwards and then it hits. It's crazy to see how perf almost perfect of a landing it is. You know, no wires are hit, no buildings hit, and everybody's all right. It was an insanely, like, miracle situation. Yeah, and as that resident just said right there, no one was seriously injured, thankfully. The pilot was treated for some injuries, but he's expected to be okay. And a lot of people crediting that pilot for saving the lives of everyone on board. So the National Transportation Safety Board will determine the cause of this crash. Okay, more information coming in this morning after a car bomb exploded as a, at a busy airport in Somalia, killing at least eight people as of right now and injuring many others. The explosion happened in Mogadishu, that is Somalia's capital, and the Associated Press is reporting this morning that an extremist group has already claimed responsibility and some of the deaths include soldiers. Witnesses say a group of UN officials appear to be the target of this attack. Those officials were in several vehicles at a checkpoint area when the blast took place. There are that airport there hosts you the u.s embassy and other diplomatic offices okay moving on here more fallout this morning following that deadly fire in the bronx that led to the deaths of 17 people you can see the destruction right here survivors and relatives of those victims have filed two class action lawsuits against the apartment buildings where the apartment buildings owners where that fire happened so one of those lawsuits claims the building's current and previous owners owners were negligent and a separate lawsuit was filed against new york city that one claims officials were negligent in enforcing those building codes those plaintiffs are seeking a combined $2 billion in damages. Officials say smoke inhalation was the cause of the deaths for all of those victims. The youngest victim was a five-year-old girl and the oldest was a 50-year-old woman. The investigation is there still ongoing. And switching gears this morning, this is like a scene straight out of a movie. Take a look behind me, check out these large crows, this group of crows that have descended upon a Northern California town and are apparently causing some big problems. Check that. That's pretty interesting with that sunset back there. So these crows flew into this town just east, just outside of San Jose. They are not only loud, but they're also causing a mess in downtown Sunnyvale, as you could imagine, coating those sidewalks and outside seating areas. The mayor says it's become such a big health hazard that the city is turning to some inexpensive tech to try and take care of the problem. How about 20 dollar green lasers to annoy the birds into leaving. It's far better than spending, you know, hundreds of dollars to spray wash the sidewalks every few weeks or spray wash Murphy Avenue because of that health risk. You look up in the sky and it's almost like a planetarium where you see just all these dots up in the sky and it's just, I don't know, nature at its best. Man, what a mess there. So the mayor says the downtown association is providing those lasers to restaurants. But of course, there's another side of the coin here. The Santa Clara Valley Audubon Society says that they're not, they're not too happy about this, saying it's dangerous for the crows and that the crows could be blinded. Still, city leaders plan to launch this pilot program at the end of this month. I'm not sure how you can tell that a crow is blinded or <laughs> let's right. just I don't know. Too. But how many times have we seen this at San Antonio yeah. shopping yes. centers? We, Quite often, right? Yes. Yeah, especially uh, kind of as you know, once the sun comes down yeah. and you see all these birds, kind they do of just seem to and congregate. Stuff. I know yeah. several shopping centers went as far as piping in the sounds of, of blackbirds, natural <laughs> yes. predators to kind of scare them off. Yeah. And speaking of that, they actually came up with a plan last year to get some falcons in the area to try and scare off these birds. Apparently that didn't work, so they're moving on to lasers now. So <laughs> yeah. we'll see how that goes. All right, RJ Marquez, <laughs> Thanks, thank guys. you. Right now, 9-11, about 45 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, what factors contributed to an increase in homicides in San Antonio? And what are police saying about the data? A look at the latest report posted on KSO.com in our next half hour. But first, back to the San Antonio Zoo, where Max Massey has a look at a kind of therapy used to help a 27-year-old Komodo dragon. And later, we're going to take you live out to Viramindi Elementary, where Katie Blake and David Sears are getting their science experiment ready. We're going to check in with them a little later. 915, the San Antonio Zoo's found some relief for Komodo Dragon dealing with arthritis. This is a procedure actually developed for use in dogs. Max Massey joins us live at the San Antonio Zoo. And Max, what is going on there? Good morning, guys. It is calm and quiet here. We don't have Bubba with us, who is the 27-year-old Komodo dragon. 
About to turn 28, we do have a Dr. Rob Koch. So tell us a little bit about Bubba. What are some of the issues that he was facing? Well, you know, Bubba being 27, almost 28 now, he's getting older. And unfortunately, as you get older, just like in people and dogs and cats and horses, our joints wear down. And as they wear down, we start getting things like arthritis and the inflammation in those joints. So in his case, over the last several years, it's been getting a little worse here and there. We've done acupuncture, which has helped tremendously. But unfortunately, I can't fix his knees because the arthritis is there, but I can help him live with them. And as he's getting older, it's getting a little worse. So tell us about the new procedure that you guys use, the new medication that's actually commonly used for dogs. Correct. It's approved for use in dogs' elbows when they have some elbow changes and pain. But we talked to the company, and they were gracious enough to offer us to be able to treat Bubba. And what it does, it puts this weak little energy into the joints because we inject it into the joints, and it helps decrease those inflammatory cells. As you decrease those inflammatory cells, there's less chemicals that's released, so less pain. Now, we know a lot of people adopted dogs during the pandemic, and as those dogs start to get older, they're going to start seeing some of that arthritis. What should they do? Well, if you see your pets limping or joints are swollen or they're really stiff in the morning, you know, those are things that could be arthritic changes or it could be, you know, little tweaks or trauma, just like we weaker muscles and backs and knees here and there. But follow up with your regular veterinarian and they can take in a full exam, may need x-rays, some blood work, different types of things to look at that animal as a whole and decide what's the best do and best course of therapy. All right, Dr. Rob Koch, thank you so much. No problem, thank you. Guys, if you have any questions, we're going to have so much more coming up on the news at noon. Steph, Mark, back to you guys. Thank you, Max. All right, Justin is back. Good morning, sir. Good morning to you guys. And we're going to go back to uh, 1985 today. I, I would say until last year, this was the most memorable weather, winter weather event we had here in San Antonio. But a lot of folks remember this. If you were around San Antonio in 1985, 13.5 inches of snow here in town. It was quite the scene. Started on the 11th, lasted through the 13th. Still ranks as our biggest snowfall of all time. Probably will for many more years to come. Uh, but a very memorable event. Back on this day in 1985. Let's go outside for you. We've got a lot of cloud cover, cloudy conditions and temperatures 45 degrees at the airport, 50 Stinson, 47 Kelly, 46 at Randolph. Not a lot of wind and I don't expect a lot of wind today. Winds will generally be light and variable. We look at the cloud cover. There is some thinning going on as you get up towards New Braunfels and Austin, but still some cloud cover nonetheless. Fredericksburg, kind of same story, junction. But north of that, there is a clearing line that will slowly work its way south and east today. I think it makes it to San Antonio around lunchtime, maybe a little bit after. Once the sun comes out, we'll get some warmer temperatures. But at the moment, it is 45 and still pretty chilly out there. 45 Carissa Springs, some 30s in Kerrville and Fredericksburg. It's 47 in Gonzales, 53 right now in Victoria. Dew point tracker. The air is very dry. It stays that way. We don't get any really increase in the humidity at all. Maybe not until next week. We get another front too on Saturday, which really brings those dew points down. The air is going to be dry. Uh, you want to have the uh, chapstick with you this time of year with uh, dew points like this. As we look at the future cast, and I mentioned those clouds clearing, this shows around midday, trying to get out of here, trying to get out of Bear County. And then by the afternoon, there's the sun, and uh, most of the area will start to see sun by late this evening. And then tomorrow, we'll see full sun. As far as temperatures go, well, it's going to be dependent on when those clouds clear out. But I think here in San Antonio, right around 63, you'll get some slightly warmer numbers to the south and slightly cooler numbers to the north, as we usually do. And by tomorrow morning, with the clouds clearing out, we should be down near 40 here in San Antonio tomorrow, to start at least. And then by the afternoon, we're in the 70s. Here's the big picture. And you see there's not a lot going on across the country, but there is a lot of cold air up across the northeast. That's been a big story. 30 in New York, negative 4 right now in caribou and as we look at the upper level pattern going forward i mentioned warm here tomorrow and friday in the 70s but we start to get a dip in the jet stream that cold air does move into texas and by saturday it's not going to be cold but it will be cooler yet again with another cold front i actually think the bigger story with this cold front is going to be the gusty winds as we get into saturday winds could gust over 40 miles per hour out of the north. So just a heads up, it is going to be a very windy day on Saturday. 70s next couple days, we could see a freeze Sunday morning after those winds calm, 31 Sunday morning, 59 
65 for MLK Day and nice weather going into next week, guys. Chilly weekend. Thank you, Justin. By right now it is 921. And Katie and David will be next with their fifth grade class live at Veramendi Elementary School. Katie and David are back on the road for 2022 for Katie's Science Lab. And they are live at Veramenda Elementary School in New Braunfels with a fifth grade class. That's right. Let's check in with them, see what the experiment will be like today. Good morning, <laughs> Katie, and please pass along our happy birthday greetings to yes. Mr. Sears. Oh, yeah, that yeah. reminds me. Yeah. Uh, guys, guess whose birthday is today? Who? David! <laughs> <laughs> uh, da, da. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank Mark, you for much. reminding me of that. I, I had posted yeah. about that earlier in the day and I forgot. So thank you. So maybe we'll get a little sing along uh, the next time we check in. So <laughs> we are here with Mrs. Hamilton's class, uh, fifth graders at Veramendi Elementary in New Braunfels, and they're getting their activity together. This one is all about weathering, erosion, and deposition. And that's what these guys have been learning about over the past couple of weeks. So while they put the finishing touches on their activity, I wanna kind of show you the setup here. So what we've got is some aluminum baking pans. We've got sand and rock. So this is David's uh, riverbed. It's kind of a slope here with the sand. He's outlined his river with some rocks. And here in just a little bit, we're gonna pour some water down our handmade rivers and that will help to kind of show the processes of weathering, erosion, and deposition. This is like a river. Yeah, this David? This is wide like a river. Yours is more like a... A stream? A creek. A, cr a creek? A creek. A cr creek. South Texas. Creek. <laughs> but then so, look at some of the... What's, what's some of the... What's some of the yeah, these look... The, the kiddos, they work together. They're in, yeah. in groups here, and they all work together to make their different... Uh, streams, rivers, creek beds, and this is going to be really cool because when we add the water in, that will help to really show what happens when we have weathering, erosion, and deposition. So for the adults at home who maybe need a little bit of a refresher, it's been a while, right? These kids know about all of this, but weathering is when the earth's surface gets broken down by different things like water, wind, what else? Ice. 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 So, and then erosion happens. So once the earth's surface and materials get broken down, uh, erosion happens and all those materials start to move and then eventually they get dropped or deposited via deposition into a different place. And uh, what happens with, with deposition? What kind of structures, new structures are made on the earth? Who can tell me one? Yes. Sand dunes. Sand dunes, yeah. So think about it when the wind sweeps the sand, moves it into a different place, we get new sand dunes. David, you've got and a group this, of kiddos. This is Hudson. Oh, y'all switched and then you switched back. This is Holland and this is Addie. And they each have their own little river in their sand. Why did y'all do three rivers? Uh, deltas usually have more than one river. Deltas usually have more than one river? Very, very good. And you threw a little green in there. Was that just, uh, is that some moss on the bottom of your river? What is that? Mother Nature. It's Mother Nature on the bottom of your river. So, so y'all ready to see some erosion happen here in just a second? Yes. Okay. I thought you named, you did three rivers for the town of three rivers. Maybe y'all know somebody in three rivers. No. No, no. okay. We'll just, we'll just go with the three rivers. Very good. Y'all did, look at, look at these rivers. Look at this creativity. So, all right. We're going to, uh, we're going to create some erosion. Yep. We'll see you in just a little bit. We're going to get our e weathering erosion and deposition on. So we'll see you in a few minutes. We look forward to it. Thank yeah, you, guys. Good to see you guys back. Happy New Year. Happy birthday. And also, happy birthday to our very own Jaffany Gray. Yeah, two birthdays today here at KSET. Much more ahead on GMSA at 9. How did a worker get caught in a piece of equipment at a food processing plant? The latest details from fire officials. First, digital journalist Ferris Sabawi standing by with a look at a brand new story posted on KSAT.com this morning. Breaks down what could have attributed to the increase in homicides in San Antonio this last year. The highest number of homicides in 27 years happened in 2021 here in the San Antonio metro area. So we have to ask what contributed to the increase in case at digital journalist Ferris about joins us live to break down this new story posted on KSET.com. Hey, good morning, Ferris. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to join you. Good to see you. First off, how many homicides were reported last year and why were there so many? 
Yeah, so Stephanie, uh, San Antonio police uh, told us that right now that they believe that there were 160 homicides uh, last year in 2021, which was, you know, not only a big increase from even 2020, but also bigger than the recent high that we had seen in 2016, when I believe 150, uh, 151 homicides were recorded in 2016. So this definitely um, does lead to some concern. You know, we've talked to a lot of experts who say that a lot of these lingering issues from the pandemic are still present among uh, our city. And so when you see these stressors from the pandemic um, continue to persist, um, you know, we've seen an increase in gun violence, you know, not just here in San Antonio, but also in so many other parts of the country. So San Antonio is not alone in seeing this big uh, uptick in homicides. And, you know, police are working on reviewing those numbers, finalizing it and figuring out their next steps forward. So it's not an anomaly. After reviewing the data, was there anything else that stood out to you, Ferris? Yeah, Mark, I think there were two things that I thought are really important for police to address going forward. I think one thing is that the number of unsolved homicides is uh, starting to increase from year to year. You know, police used to clear roughly 60 or 70 percent of their homicides in years past, which means that they made an arrest or at least identified the suspect in um, roughly, you know, 70 percent of those cases. Uh, according to our analysis, looking at last year's numbers, it looks like more than half of the homicides remain unsolved at this point, which, you know, adds a lot of work to the detectives. And also, you know, it just uh, must be very frustrating for, for those families who have lost somebody to not have that closure. Um, so that's one thing. I think the other thing that really stands out to me is, uh, unfortunately, it seems like the victims uh, can be getting younger and younger in these cases. You know, there are so many teens, 15 year olds, 16 year olds that have been shot with no suspect identified in those cases yet. And uh, beyond that, you know, we did see a few babies on that list, as well as a six year old girl, Soraya Perez, who you guys may remember was shot uh, in that car meetup uh, over Mother's Day last year. Yeah. So when you see the 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 uh, age of these homicide victims get younger and younger, you know, it's just a really tragic thing. And what are police saying about the homicide numbers? Yeah, Stephanie, police are working on, you know, reviewing these numbers and looking into it. You know, the one thing that they want to make sure people understand is that San Antonio is still by and large a, a safe city. You know, the, the number of homicides may be uh, concerning and it certainly is a concern. But something that's important to note is, you know, our city has grown so much in these past few years alone. You know, over the past decade, I believe our population has grown something like eight percent. And so while these numbers may be scary, you know, the last time we saw this many homicides was 1994. Uh, that homicide rate was so much higher than the homicide rate we have now. We're something at about, you know, 10 homicides per 100,000 people now, which is, you know, not only lower than when San Antonio had that bad streak of gun violence in the 90s, but also still lower than most major cities that have seen the same crime increases we have. So I think something police want to note is that a lot of these homicides are usually tied to risky behavior, things like that, and it's not um, on a random scale. With that being said, I know that they're definitely going to be looking into these numbers and seeing what they can do to maybe close these cases more and seeing how they can support their detectives in making sure these cases get closed. All right, with some much needed perspective on some data, date, case at digital journalist Ferris Sabawi. Thank you so much, Ferris. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Ferris. And taking a look outside with live cam, I went up to 47 degrees. It's exciting to see we're close to 50. <laughs> There's that. Uh, we, we will get warmer later today, Stephanie. We'll, we'll get into the 60s, I think, by the afternoon. we got to wait on this cloud cover, though, to get out of here. It's still gray, still chilly out there. Let's look at the satellite picture. tells the story. We're still underneath that deck of clouds, but there is a clearing line stretching from roughly Sonora Junction to just north of Austin, and it is working its way south and east. That should move towards San Antonio, that clearing line, by midday and into early afternoon. But Sandy has a pretty similar question to you, Steph. Uh, when is it going to warm up? Uh, and I, I think the uh, the dog might be asking that question. Uh, that looks but, nice, man. That's cool. But why Mariners can't talk? Well, if you could, that's, that's, what, that's right. what they'd that's, be saying. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I agree. Adorable. Uh, soon, soon. Uh, right now, we're at 45 degrees at the airport, 37 Bernie Stage, 39 Comfort, 38 in Bandera. And as we zoom out, some, some 50s along the coast. So you can see the moderating temperatures here. 
Uh, the look outside right now, cloudy skies again, temperatures here in town at 45 to dew point in the 30s, so the air is still relatively dry. 63 this afternoon. Once those clouds clear, light and variable winds, and we've got 70s on the way next couple days. We'll look ahead to the weekend for you here in just a few minutes, guys. Okay, later this afternoon, Justin, thank you. I-35 at St. Mary's looking pretty good right now. Top local stories we're following today. An accident at a food processing plant here in San Antonio sent a worker to the hospital. San Antonio firefighters say they had to free her from a piece of equipment inside the plant. So rescue crews were called to Andy Garcia Foods in the 1800 block of Jackson Keller near West Avenue around 430 this morning. Crews say a worker was cleaning a piece of machinery when she somehow got caught in it. Firefighters eventually had to take that machinery apart to get her out of it. The piece of equipment described as a mixer. According to the website, Garcia Foods makes things like barbacoa and chorizo. San Antonio police say a man was killed in the crash on the city's west side early this morning. Happened in the 3500 block of Weissman just after midnight. SAPD says a man was driving way too fast when he lost control and crashed into a tree and then rolled several times. Police say that driver was ejected and was pronounced dead at the scene. Police are now investigating how he lost control. There are no reports of any other vehicles involved. We now know the name of the second teen who died in a car crash up near Johnson High School this weekend. He is 16-year-old Gabriel Juarez. Juarez, along with 17-year-old Ziv Houdani, were both killed Saturday after investigators say they crashed into a driver on Bulverde Road near the entrance of Johnson High School. Collision caused both vehicles to burst into flames. A woman and her daughter in the other vehicle were injured and taken to a hospital. That crash is still being investigated by the Bear County Sheriff's Office. Right now it's 938, about 47 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And there they are right after the break. Katie and David doing their erosion experiment with a group of fifth graders at Veramendi Elementary School. It's time up in New Braunfels. Katie and David have everything ready to go for their science experiment at Veramendi Middle School. I thought it was elementary school. Uh, Is it? I think it's element yeah, oh, it's okay. elementary school. Yeah. yeah, they're just super smart over there. <laughs> hey guys, what's about to happen? <laughs> Hi, good morning. Yes, we have been getting prepped this hour. Everyone has their uh, river beds ready to go, and uh, we're going to get started here in just a few minutes. I'm going to kind of show what things are going to look like, and then we're going to go around, and because I want to see all the kiddos, their, their river beds, and uh, see how all this works out. So once you have your slope ready to go and your river made, then you can start to pour some water down your slope and what starts to happen here, weathering and erosion takes place from the water and that starts to carry some of the sand all the way down. It may even grab a few of the rocks there like that. And before you know it, your landscape looks completely different. Things get deposited via deposition down to a different place. So that is what we're doing this morning and we are going to get started. All right, you guys, ready to go? All right, go ahead, and we kind of talked about maybe starting with a little water and then adding more and seeing, and seeing what happens. So when you add a little bit of water, things don't change a lot, but when you start to add more and more water and it's moving faster, then it changes your landscape more. It's moving your sand, it's moving your rocks down to the bottom. So good job. Y'all, all of our other groups, y'all can go ahead and get started too. Go for it. But you see it's moving. It's it's moving some of your rocks. Yeah, that looks great. Good job, good job. Uh, David, birthday man, you've got to do yours as well. <laughs> David has to make sure he gets his done. <laughs> Here we go. Awesome. And for anybody, any parents uh, watching at home, this is something pretty easy that you can do with your kiddos at home too. It's just these few ingredients, some pebbles, some sand, an aluminum tray like this, and then some water, and that's really about it. So this is an easy one to do at home too. All right, everyone's getting started. Okay, y'all ready? This right. side, y'all ready to go? Y'all turn your turn in this way. It's going backwards. Now forward. Yeah, there you go. Okay. 
Okay, Hudson, you, that was your river right there, Hudson? What'd you think? Uh, you the, sand moved down the, yeah. moved down the river? It kind of yeah. like Hi, got Megan. washed up and went down more. I have you, I'm, I'm just moving you around. I'm gonna you see, get you on at, camera. Watch the green, the green okay. even go away. The sand kind of absorbs the water. A little bit. So if it's, if it's a rushing river, if it's really coming down hard, if we've had one of those floods that we get here in South Texas, Oh yeah. Wash it away faster, right? Yeah, a flood is a really good example. So if you have a lot of water at once coming in, that's going to do a lot more weathering and erosion, and that's going to move things around faster. Water came on top of the dry sand. Good job. And the rocks fell up. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. We also have to consider that, that erosion takes place over thousands of years, hundreds and thousands of years, right? Yes. So like this rock may be Oh, there good job. See your rocks are. Your rocks are starting to move. Rocks may, may not be there. They may move. All the water Some depositions happening. It's like a delta. Very cool. Yeah. All right, real quick, everybody, this is Megan. Megan is in Mrs. Hamilton's class. Unfortunately, she's out sick, so she couldn't join us today. But I wanted to make sure that she got to be a part of the fun. So Megan is joining us from home. And uh, we wish she was here. I wish she were here, Megan. All right, good job, everybody. You guys did a great job. Fantastic. Hey, and this is pretty, pretty easy cleanup, too. Well, that's, that's, <laughs> that was a good experiment if it's easy cleanup. So, so what did awesome. we learn today? What did y'all learn? That the rivers lead into a big body of water. And? Erosion takes a um, long time to form stuff. Yeah. Oh, that, that's very good. What did you learn? Um, yeah. What different kind of erosions are there? Some of the, uh, There's deltas, sand dunes, valleys, and canyons. Those are all the results of erosion, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> so if you go out to your, if you go out to the Guadalupe River, have you been there before? Yes, sir. So it, it's flowing all the time, right? Yes, sir. So you may see something now, and then you'll come back when you're 75 years old. Hey! Yeah, good. I, you guys, you want to sing before we wrap up? You want to sing Happy Birthday to Mr. David? Yeah. All right, ready? One, two, three. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to you. Awesome. Absolutely fantastic. I hope you all learned something today. Uh, yeah. Something about erosion. Thanks for having what us, happens guys. When you turn old, erosion. You know what I'm I was going to say, <laughs> if anything else, they learned that David is one year older today. <laughs> David, yes, Sears. definitely. Uh, we have a few more uh, Katie Science Labs on the road lined up for the rest of the month and even into February and March. So we're really excited to be back with our local schools. Thank you to Mrs. Hamilton and her class yeah, for having us today. Thank you, guys. And thank we'll send you. it back to you guys. All right. Tell Megan we said hi, too, yeah. Katie. Bye. Bye. And again, happy Bye. birthday to Mr. Sears and Ms. Jaffe Gray, part yes. of our KSAP family. Yes. I like the way David explains things. Yeah, that's what happens when you get old. <laughs> you get old, you get erosion. That's true. It's funny. Yeah. Yes. Justin? Yeah. I was about to say, the, the, uh, one of the girls he interviewed said erosion takes a long time. Well, David's seen it. He's seen a lot of uh, oh my God. weather events unfold <laughs> through the years here around. Justin that's, that's, that's true. And he's, he knows not, I love him. he's not wrong. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Uh, anyway, let's take a look at the time lapse. Uh, speaking of time going by. Uh, we had the clouds this morning and we still do have the clouds, although they're trying to thin out a little bit and, and temperatures will eventually jump up from where they are right now. 45 degrees at the airport. Calm winds dew point is at 37. And as we look at the uh, visible satellite picture, this really does tell the story. So there is our clear, clearing line. It's through Junction now, through Fredericksburg and kind of thinning out a little bit in Austin. We'll lose some of the clouds. We still may get a few thin high clouds later this afternoon, but I think you're going to see a lot more sun. It's probably going to take until lunchtime or thereafter for this to happen, though, here in town at least. 45 degrees again right now. 50 Katua, 38 Kerrville, 38 in Fredericksburg. Dew points in the 30s in a lot of spots. The air is still very dry, and we look at the future cast. This particular model does take the clouds away by probably midday. 
and then uh, put us in the, the sun, most of the area in the sun by 4 p.m. Here is the forecast. Temperatures, once we see some of that sun, should uh, bounce up to about 63 degrees or so, and then we'll fall back down into the 50s and eventually 40s tonight. Here's the big picture, and there was a little bit of rain uh, to our south uh, this morning. That's all moving away, that last storm system moving away. And as we look at the big picture here, some unsettled weather up across the Pacific Northwest, and then uh, you got some a little bit of lake effect snow, or at least a little bit of snow, I should say, up around parts of Maine. Not too much going on here, but there is a lot of cold air up here. The numbers have been really chilly across the Northeast. 30 right now in New York City, negative 4 in Caribou. Some really chilly wind chills, too. A lot of the country dealing with some cooler weather. We'll see a warm up here next couple of days. 70s for us here in Texas and South Texas, specifically today and tomorrow. We could even see a few 80s as we get into Friday. But we see another dip in the jet stream. Some cold air does move south. Nice little potent system right here drives a cold front through, and that pushes us back into the 50s on Saturday. That cold front, the main story with that cold front will be gusty winds. We think winds will gust up above 40 miles per hour, maybe up to 45, close to 45 by Saturday. So just a heads up, it's going to be a really windy day. The extended forecast. We'll go 74 tomorrow, 76 Friday. Gusty winds cooler, 58 on Saturday, 31 Sunday morning. So we could see another freeze here in town and then rebounding into the 60s and 70s next week. We'll be right back. Good morning. Coming up on live, Denzel Washington from the tragedy of Macbeth, plus Lindsey Vaughn and some simple food swaps for sugar foods. We'll see you soon. Another quick look at the roads with Trans Guide. Looking out there at I-35 at Alamo, things are moving there, and I-35 at Pine doesn't appear to be any problems at this hour. Well, we have proven this for seven, several years on this newscast. We are a sucker for anything food-related, and Oreo is celebrating their 110th birthday with a first-ever flavor. That's right. Speaking of birthdays today, so for the occasion, Oreo releasing a special flavor called Chocolate Confetti Cake. It has sprinkles galore, the cookies themselves filled with sprinkles and have two layers of filling, the signature cream flavor pumped with sprinkles and a chocolate cake flavored cream. Oh my goodness, you had me at Oreo, and then yeah. you had me at <laughs> <laughs> sprinkles and then chocolate again. So Oreo said that it's the first time it's used, used sprinkles both in and on the cookie. So retailers will start celebrating the I was sorry, selling the treats on January 31st for a limited time. So very soon here. Yeah. So again, it's called chocolate, chocolate confetti cake mm -hmm. Oreos. Uh, let's see how long the sprinkles last before they run into some sort of weird supply chain issue. Aww. <laughs> and they have to go back to normal. But I'm okay with the. I, I like the thin ones. That well, feels yeah. a little less guilty, you know. That, well, yes, that's true. But then you end up eating more of them. So you might as well just, you know, get them all. Eat the whole bag.